Welcome to Runner's Journal. Hi, I'm Colleen. I'm a certified yoga teacher and a longtime runner. I teach yoga at Shanti Yoga Studio in Hopkinton, Mass. As a runner, I know how important my yoga practice is to my overall performance. That is why I, along with my two friends, Carly Fouth and Mary Pratt, who are also runners and yoga teachers, have put together this three-part series, Yoga for Runners. We created this three-part yoga series to help you before and after your training runs or for any kind of cross-training you do. Part one is designed to warm up your muscles before you head off onto your run. This section is about 15 minutes. It is short and sweet to get your body and mind ready to go. Part two is a post-run stretch. This part of training is often skipped and probably one of the most important things you can do for your body to stay healthy throughout your weeks, months of training. Part three is a body scan meditation to help with or teach you the mind-body connection. Meditation, like training, takes practice and repetition. This 20-minute meditation can be done anytime, after a long run, before bed, or at the start of your day. Carly, Mary, and I hope you use these videos to help you run the best and feel the best you can on Marathon Monday. Good luck. Hi, this is Colleen, and welcome to Runner's Journal. Uh, I am focused, I'm doing the second part of three series for Yoga for Runners. Um, my part will focus on post-run yoga poses. So step into the front of your mat. These are my friends, Mary and Carly. They're joining us. They'll show us the poses. Um, and just stand in mountain pose. So in mountain pose, you're grounding in through your feet. Your core is nice and tight and lifting right up through your chest and the crown of your head. Um, palms face forward. It's a strong foundational pose, right? And just find your breath, right? So after you've come in from your long run, um, just beginning to slow your heart rate down, right? So just like gentle breath, right? Breathe in and breathe out, slowing yourself down. And then from here, uh, reach your arms up into extended mountain. Right? And feeling from your fingertips to your toes, some length, right? All through your side body, all through your front and back. And then maybe even just a little lift up through your chest, right? So just reaching up and stretching open. You're running, you're like hunched over, just a little bit bent over, just like opening up through the chest. All right, and then take one more breath in and bring your hands through heart center, bend your knees and bow forward. So knees are bent a lot, right? Tight hamstrings fall on runners a lot, right? Let your head drop. All right, and then walk your hands up your shins, press them into your shins. This is flat back, so find flat back. Heart pulls forward, hips draw back, take a breath, and then bow forward. Right? Just a little flow in your body, right? Root through your feet and stand all the way up. Reach right through your fingertips. And then when you're ready to exhale, again, right through heart center. So just getting a little flow in your body, loosening up your, model, uh, your muscles. Halfway lift, bend and bow. And then push into the floor, stand all the way up. Fantastic. And then hands through heart center, pause here. Separate your feet just uh, about hips width or wider. It's just kind of um, a personal thing. And then bend your knees and bow forward, taking ragdoll. And then just in ragdoll, you know, if your shoulders are tight from running, you can grab opposite arms. If that doesn't feel so great, it might um, pull too much on your lower back. Um, release your hands to the ground, right? You don't have to be superwoman here, right? You're just calming down from your run. All right, and then place your right hand on the floor out in front of you, sorry. And then straighten, which is at your left leg, and keep your right, right knee bent. Right? And then just twist open to the left. So just, you should feel this in the outseam of your left leg, so your IT band. Right? Take a breath, like not overdoing it on the twist, and then bow forward, find ragdoll again. Right? And then switch sides, right? So left hand comes to the ground, right hand reaches to the sky. If this is too much on your shoulder, just place your hand on your hip, right? Take that right out of your shoulder and bring it into your spine. Take another full breath in and then bow forward. 
Nice work. All right, come to a halfway lift. And now strong through your legs. See how Carly and um, Mary have their knees bent? Push into the floor and stand up. Right up. Okay, and then now coming into some balancing poses. We do them to strengthen your ankles and the bottoms of your feet, which are set in sneakers a lot if you're training for a marathon. <laughs> All right, so um, take your right knee into your chest. So ground into your left foot. There's a little soft bend in your left knee. And then just feel the steadiness of this, right? So this is, I know, not stretching, but it is strengthening the feet on your, mu the muscles on your feet. Mm -hmm. And then bring um, that foot back down and switch sides, right? So ground into your right foot, lift your left leg. If you feel like you wanna amp it up a little and get some more stretch and strength in your hip flexor, extend your left leg forward. When you do this, notice Carly is standing upright and not leaning back, right? So kind of press your chest forward. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then rebend your knee if it's extended. Place your foot on the ground. Bring your hands down by your side. Take a breath. And then let it out. Nice work. All right. So this time, um, again, ground into your left foot. Lift your right knee into your chest. Stand nice and tall. And then just start to spin your right ankle up towards the sky and your knee to the ground. And then cross your ankle over your thigh for a standing figure four. So you start to bend into your standing leg or maybe just stay standing up. It depends on how tight your hips are. And I can probably guess about 99% of you have really hip tight hips. <laughs> All right. So take a few minutes, not minutes, breaths into this hip and then ground down through your standing foot, stand back up, right? knee to chest and then foot to the floor. Right? Shake it out a little, right? Move your hips from side to side and then switch sides. Right? So same thing other side, take your time to feel your core, feel your strength, open your hip up. Right? And then don't just dive into this, right? Especially if you've just done like 20 miles. These are gonna be really tight, right? So breathe into it, go until your body kind of warns you, all right? It will. All right, take a breath in and a breath out. And then ground into your standing foot, lift your left knee into your chest and place your foot down to the earth. Good work. All right, shake your hips out. All right, take an inhale, sweep your arms right up to the sky. And then bend your knees and bow forward. Come to a halfway lift. And then place your hands on the ground and step back into plank. So I know in the first series, um, Carly added a little bit of this in. Um, it's something that goes forgotten, um, the core, right, in runners. Uh, so we bring it in, even in post-run. Yeah, so take a breath in. And then on the exhale, bring your knees down to the ground. All right. And stack, come into tabletop. Yeah, so tabletop where your shoulders are over your wrists and hips are over your knees. And then on the inhale, pull your heart or your chest towards the front of the room and your tailbone towards the sky. And then on your exhale, press into your hands, round through your back, feeling cat. Nice. And then find a neutral spine. Take your right arm and reach it out to the side, just at shoulder height. And then twist your chest towards the right side. And so gentle twist. Yeah, and Mary's modifying here with her hand on her hip. Take a breath in. And then exhale, bring your right hand, thread it right through to the other side. So your palm turns up and the bottom back side of your arm presses down. Yeah, and you'll see like these guys have been on their mats for a while. They're also marathoners and triathletes, um, but they've learned what their body needs, right? And it's just what came up to them right now. All right. Take your, um, press into your left hand, bring it back to the ground if it's lifted, 
and then take another twist, like a counter twist. Keep coming and take your left foot, turn it off to the edge of your mat and tent your foot. And extend your right leg down for a modified side plank. Right? So if you've gone on a shorter run right, and you want to work some more core, you can add it right here by just pressing into your bottom hand and your extended foot and lifting your left knee up. Sorry, Mary, I'm making you do that. <laughs> All right. If you just want stretch here, drop the knee back down, reach the top arm up and bring it up and over. All right. So feeling stretch and length through your whole right side. Breathe in and breathe out. Come back to center. So all fours again, find another cow and cat or any kind of movement before we do the other side. All right. And then take your left hand, extend it out to the left. All right. And then twist your chest open towards the left and then thread the needle. Right. Breathe here, right. in and out. And then take one more breath in. Bring your right hand right back in underneath your shoulder. Spin open again, just a nice little twist. And then take your right foot, turn it off the edge of your mat, tuck your toes, extend your left leg down. And again, your choice here, right? So do you need, you need some more strengthening in your side or, or right now you just need opening? So tarp arm can reach forward, bottom knee can lift. And then just not trying to get your heart rate up, right? Keeping a smooth, steady flow of breath. All right, bring your hands back down. And then just sit back into child's pose just for a breath. So a couple of versions of child's pose. Um, Mary's showing you the version with your knees together and hands down by your sides. Right? This can feel really great on your shoulders. Um, I know running can bring a lot of stress and tense, tenseness in that area, your traps. Um, so that's a fabulous uh, posture. Um, Carly is taking her knees out wide. She has super tight hips, right? So she needs the width there. Um, and this too can feel good on your shoulders, right? All right, come back up to the tabletop. Um, and then press back to down dog. Actually, yeah, go ahead, down dog. <laughs> I change my mind a lot. All right, take your right leg and just step it forward into a low lunge and then drop your left knee down, nice. All right, and here we'll do just an easy um, flow, um, just in your hip flexors and your hamstrings, right? This should feel really good. So hands are on the ground. And then just shift your hips forward so you feel a stretch, gentle stretch in your front hamstring, um, hip flexor. <laughs> and pull your chest a little forward. Yeah. And then hinging back, just right into a, uh, a half split. So tuck toes or not. Okay, take a breath. And then come right back into all right, the lunge, nice and gentle, breathe in and then half split, breathe out. Nice work. Good, one more like this. Breathe in, lift your heart forward, just gentle sinking into your hip, and then breathe out. Nice work. All right, come back into um, that low lunge, lift your back knee, and step back to plank. Mm -hmm. There's that fun pose again. Mm -hmm. So in plank, right, just feeling your lower body, everything that's facing the ground, press up into your back body, right? So that's your quads, your shins, your belly, your chest, right? Even your chin, just drawing in just a little. Mary's modifying here, All right? And then come back to you, bringing your knees down, find tabletop, and step your left leg forward. All right, so in that low lunge, all right, draw your heart forward. Take a breath in, and then shift your hips back. Breathe out. So it's just for a breath or two, right? You can flex your toes here. Yep, inhale. 
and then exhale. Nice work. One more like this. So just getting a little flow into those really tight muscles. And then come on back. Nice work. Now this time, come forward into your low lunge. And then step back to plank for just a second. And now drop your knees down and come onto your forearms all the way down and extend your legs. Like come all the way down to your bellies. Sphinx, I should have told you that. So opening through your chest, you elbows are stacked right under your shoulders, palms face down, and your hands are pressing down and pulling forward. Your, yep, sorry, pressing down and back. Your chest is coming forward. And then put a little emphasis on your toes, your little pinky toes grounding down, right? and then breathe. Right? We always say that, just breathe. But it should feel like that, really, truly. All right, come on down, forehead to mat. Turn your cheek to one side. <clears throat> and then um, bring your hands just by your, underneath your shoulders. And if you need to take longer there, take longer. Okay? And bring your chin or your forehead to your mat, finding locus. So belly presses down, belly and hips. Heart, chest lifts forward. And then if you want to work on some more strengthening in your back body, extending your legs, lifting them up and reaching back, right? Yeah, and then just find the breath here, like a steady flow in and out. All right, come on back down. Mm -hmm. Then this time, uh, I'm just showing you some options. You can always stay with that. Bring your hands down by your sides. All right, and you got uh, all the way down, so palms face down. And then this is the same kind of pose at your back side, strengthening your back body. So lift, belly down, lift everything else up. Right. Yeah, and again, like this is all just options and things we're showing you. Come on back down. Mm -hmm. um, and you make it what, it what you need for especially depending on how far you've run. All right, um, make your way back up onto um, your hands and knees, and then walk your feet all the way through coming onto your backs. We're getting to the really good part. <laughs> it's all been great though. All right, find bridge, right? So walk your feet in. So really, really important if your knees are achy or swollen after your run, that can happen, um, give yourself some space. So walk your feet away from your hips a little. Um, if they feel good, the general measurement is just fingertips touching your heels. Right? So this just press down and lift up. This is strengthening your glutes and hamstrings, but it's also opening up your whole front side. Right? I'm just feeling that. And Mary opened up her arms, right? She's just pressing gently into the back of them and creating a lift up in her chest. Carly's doing more of a strength work with her arms, right? So bending her elbows and really grounding into the earth. All right, take one more breath and then exhale to lower. Um, bring both knees into your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. And maybe with your whole spine on the ground, let's just rock side to side. Nice. Just massaging your spine can feel so good. A mat is really important for this. <laughs> and then find neutral or center and bring your feet back down. Um, take your right knee into your chest. Give it a squeeze. And um, Maybe you can also bring your knee just outside of your rib cage, getting into your hip joint a little bit. And keeping your left knee bent, extend your leg up to the sky. Uh, which one? Right one. <laughs> and so make it not too, too deep to begin with. Um, just letting your hamstring kind of loosen, right? And then as you feel, as you want, you can work with a bent knee or straightened knee. You can start to gently draw it towards your chest. Right? Again, measure how you're feeling. 
Take a few breaths. Let the stretch come into your muscles. Mm -hmm. um, left knee, now bring your leg, uh, sorry, right leg back up to center. You might need a strap for this or not. I'm going to give Carly one. Um, let your left knee knock out to the left a little and just drop your right leg over to the right. right so just getting into the inseam of your inner thigh. All right, sending some breath there. And then coming back up to center. Um, take your, yeah, switch your hands in the strap. Extend your left leg down. And then for your IT band here, right, so turn your toes out to the right. So you have your right foot up, turn your toes out to the right. And just cross your leg over your body until your heel is just about over your shoulder, right? no deeper. And you should feel this all along the outseam of your right leg, so from your calf to your knee, all the way up and wraps around your hip. Okay, come back to center. Switch your legs. You can draw both in first, try and give yourself a squeeze. And then right foot's on the floor, Left leg extends to the sky. Right. Just switching to the other side. Again, um, one side can be tighter than the other. That's a known fact. <laughs> um, breathe in and out here. Listening to your body is a big, big piece of um, the yoga practice. Uh, and it's very hard to do. Right? So give yourself some time and space around that. All right. Let your right knee kind of lean out to the right. That just gives you a little counterbalance and your left leg open up. Yeah, and even Mary has her right arm out. Carly, it's like a grounding. All right, come back up through center. Do that little turn with your left toes. Turn them out to the left and bring that leg over, across your body doesn't have to go too far. You can see it right here. Carly's chest heel is just about over her chest and just stretching through the outside of that leg. All right. Take one more breath in. Nice work. Come back up to center. You can lose the strap. Draw both knees into your chest again. And then maybe some movement side to side. Okay, and then um, bring your feet to the ground. If you don't have a block, you don't have to use a block. Um, we're gonna take waterfall. If you have a block or something that you can put right underneath your lower back, Mary's gonna do it without. All right, right underneath your lower back. It should feel good, right? It should be, feel like this nice grounding on your lower back and a release. If it doesn't, adjust the block. And this is simple, and as runners, you probably know this pose and do it after, um, after long runs, kind of flushing your legs and your muscles. Right, you can go with flex toes or just nice and easy. Um, maybe if you're a person who is like very tense and not necessarily tense, but like Carly. <laughs> You might want to relax a little, right? Like sometimes that's your work. All right, take a breath in. Bring your feet to the ground. If you have a block, lift your hips. All right, uh, one last thing. Take your feet out wide of your mat uh, on the floor. Feet on the floor. Let's go into something. We're not ready for that yet. All right, so your feet are just uh, wide of the mat. Knees are right over your ankles. Drop your knees over to the right and arms just out in a T. Yeah, Feel really good on your hips, a little bit in your torso, All right? Send some breath in and out. And then bring your knees back up to center. Switch your legs over to the left side. Breathe in and out. All right, nothing forced, just gentle, here, winding down. 
and then come back up to center. And give yourself a squeeze. Great work. Well, that's it for uh, post-run yoga, the second of our three-part series uh, for Runner's Journal. Um, and we hope that you will stay tuned for our, the third part of our series, um, which is Mary and some meditation, uh, my favorite part. Thank you.